Good afternoon. Welcome back. This is Mike Harris on Revolution Radio. Today is Tuesday, December 9th, 2014. I'm on with my dear friend, Alex Powers. And Alex, we're being joined by my producer, Brett, who happens to be uh, on an assignment right now. So, Brett, welcome to the show. Welcome to, to, to Revolution Radio as a as a guest. Hey, Brett. How are you time. doing? So, so, Brett, why don't you take a minute and, and tell the listeners where you are, because I, I know this is going to be very fascinating for them. This is where I'm supposed to be right now. I'm not supposed to be back in the USA yet, but because Gordon and Jim Hankey got sick, had to make sure they got home, and uh, I, I couldn't make uh, this, this other trip that I was counting on making. So, so Brett, uh, the floor is yours. Why don't you give an overview of where you're at and what you're doing? Well, I've been in Italy for about a week I'm over here looking into some technology. Some of you may know the gentleman. His name is Kesh. And um, his technology is very real. I've seen it. And uh, I don't know how much Mike wants me to tell, but you got to let me know, Mike. Well, go, go ahead. You know, one of the things we've been finding is that uh, the we can get uh, an 800 to 1 ratio of weight to propulsion uh, from some of this anti-grav uh, uh, technology that you've been looking at so far which i think is just stunning it's a lot more than that i've seen the gravitational system i've seen weight reduction weight increase uh submersion systems energy producing systems um a bunch of different nanotechnology uh for use in cars that fly around and uh communication blocking systems like they used on the uh, USS uh, Donald Duck, <laughs> what the Veterans Today article called it. The, the Russians had it on, uh, on, on, on two aircraft and uh, blacked out all the electronic systems on an Aegis-class destroyer in the Black Sea. That is correct. And the system uses a gravitational field to encompass the area and blocks all the, field, the radiating fields going in so it cannot communicate. Mm-hmm. Well, not only can it not communicate, but all, all of the electronic systems go down. I mean, yeah. It's, it, it's different than an EMP pulse. An EMP pulse will destroy your electronics mm-hmm. and they'll never be used again. What this does is it merely uh, makes them inert for the time that the field is deployed. And then once the, the field is collapsed, then uh, the devices can work again. You can have it several ways. You can have it where it just blocks the communications. You can have it where it turns off the electricity. The field will literally absorb all the electrons into it, become part of the system, or you can put out a field to alter the structure of the circuits on the ship so they permanently disabled and they have to be rewired. Mm-hmm. Interesting. But any, anyway, you know, uh, about a year or so ago, I, I we started this uh, discussion with uh, with Cash, and uh, you know, it's one of the commitments that I made to to myself and, and to the people of the planet is that I'm going to do everything in my power. To attempt to get these uh, these cutting edge technologies out uh, from being suppressed, uh, you know the the energy technologies, uh, the propulsion technologies, the anti grav technology. We we know that the uh, secret space program run by the secret shadow government has these things, but they suppress them and they don't allow the rest of us to have them. And so, uh, you know, Brett, Brett's really on a mission over there to, uh, you know, learn everything he can, get it back into this country, uh, the knowledge, and, and start working on these things so that, you know, the, the people of the entire planet have access to the technology that, uh, that we know exist. Yes. Um, hopefully, if we can do this in the future, everyone will have uh, all the energy they want. They'll be able to travel for free, and they'll have... Um, access to health technology where they won't need to get sick anymore and die. Well, you know, there, there's even simple things. You know, if, you have, if you've got a weight reduction technology and you look at a massive generator that takes a big engine to run it, if you reduce the weight of the generator itself, you could run this thing off a, you know, 10-horsepower lawnmower engine uh, and you'll get whoa, just whoa, wait, a- wait, 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 Mike, Mike, wait. Let me just say something. We were showing some stuff that goes in cars and basically makes it uh, float, become weightless. So even the electric batteries or power systems that you would need to push around a car become nothing because the car is weightless. Okay. No, that's you know I, I'm I'm concurring with you. I I think we're yeah. We're, I know. I'm just telling you. 
Okay, but but j- j- just just think of a, of an electrical generator that supplies power to a city. Uh, you know, typically, uh, let, let's talk about a GE Frame Seven. That's a big generator, but it also has a big uh, turbine engine in there. Um, you know, if you can if you can drive the generating component without having to use the the, the turbine engine and use something much smaller and get the same output, uh, that's a tremendous savings. That, that that's just that's as easy savings right there. That that's just something so simple. The energy systems are very small and they never run out of energy. Put it that way, and you can tune it to how much energy you want. You want volts, you want kilowatts, megawatts, whatever you want. Hmm. So can I interrupt real quick? Sure, right. go ahead, Alex. Okay, so Cash, what's the deal with him? I mean, he's got he's a smart guy. Obviously, he's genius. He's come up with these brilliant uh, technologies. What's he going to do with them? He's just going to just like what talk about it or what's the plan? No, no, no. A, There's a, a lot going on in the background. I was there for some meetings and calls from people around the world, and uh, let's put it this way: I'm not going to name countries, but another other countries are have hopped on the bandwagon and are already developing it behind okay. the background. And there's going to be commercial units available very soon for different things. Well, come on. Don't stop there. You're, you're tantalizing <laughs> us now. You're, you're in, well, for, I, getting in for a pound. Well, the Chinese are uh, making some systems that will be available soon. And the Japanese are working on systems. And that's pretty much all I can say about that right now. Okay. So what, what else can we have to look forward to? If, if we were going to look at a technology roadmap, uh, what would be some of the prominent features on it? Well, it depends what you want out of it, but uh, for the, the layman, I guess it would be energy and transportation. Okay. Yeah, I mean, yeah. you could stick these things in any anything that needs electricity, you can stick one of these things in. Or you can have your house set up where the wires in the house literally themselves provide all the electricity you want. So you can just plug your device in wherever you want, and your house can be totally yeah. off the grid. Very cool. And so, what's what's the timeline on this? Uh, you know, I mean, uh, these things don't happen overnight. Uh, do we expect a, you know, a, a, a two-year introduction, a five-year introduction? How how soon before they become prolific and are ubiquitous around the world? Unless it gets blocked or stopped, I would say within a year or two, you'll have all this. I have all, a lot of the stuff will be coming out next year if it's not blocked. And, and who who would be doing the blocking? Well, the bad guys would, the uh, Zionists. The Belgians, and uh, they tried to kill him several times already, and there's a investigation going on about that. They tried to poison him with arsenic, they poisoned his wife with belladonna, and they tried to kill him with smart dust and uh, using uh, microwaves to activate it in the body. So uh, what's a smart dust? Talk about that a little bit. It's an intelligent powder that they put on you. You get you, they put it on his car, but you get it on you, and it stays in your system for six months, six twelve months or more. And it's it's benign by itself, and you get one or two of them on you. And then whenever they want, they hit you with a certain microwave frequency that initiates a reaction in the body between the smart dust, and it will kill you. And then when you go to the morgue and die, it looks as benign because the microwave is gone. Okay, so so it's what is it? it heats the dust up inside the body and creates a condition where it damages all the organs and it causes shutdown. Pretty much. Okay. All right. It makes you go, it, it makes your head go crazy too. Okay. Well, let, let, let's talk about the transportation issues. Uh, what what scale of transportation are, are we talking? Just uh, you know, surface transportation, uh, air flight. Are we talking off planet, inter, interplanetary, interstellar. What, what, what's the limit here? You can be able to travel across the universe with these systems very easily. But society right now that I know is not structured for that. So initially, they're probably just going to have systems that float around on the ground. Maybe fl- maybe they'll fly around, but there's going to have to be international collaboration and laws regulating all this. Because otherwise, you're going to have millions of Africans flying to Washington, D.C. or wherever causing havoc. Hey, what's wrong with that, Brad? <laughs> well, what's Sorry, wrong? Cause a little havoc, yeah. So, so no, where, no, what's where, wrong with Africans coming to the U.S.? And I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, and so that's only my bias because I'm in the U.S. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so, so where are the Russians at with this? You know, we they they demonstrated to uh, the U.S. military their their capability to black out uh, and shut down an entire 
See, people, you need to understand the Aegis Destroyer is really the uh, the crown jewel of uh, of U.S. defense. It, uh, it it's a unique system. It's it's very highly sophisticated. It's um, it, it's it's one of the, the the factors that leads to the the the, the war theory of uh, full spectrum dominance is the Aegis uh, Destroyer. It coordinates uh, all the defense for for an entire carrier battle group, and they can shut this thing off. So, what else do the Russians have? Where are they at with this? I don't know where all the Russians are at, but I can tell you that Putin knows Kesh. Okay. <laughs> That's all I can say about that. <laughs> oh shoot! So, what what else can you tell us? What else is going on? Tell us about these uh, the, the health technologies. What's going on there? What can people look forward to uh, as far as that goes? This is one of the other things China is going to be coming out with probably uh, early next year. Um, they have uh, corporations that are funded through the government actually doing all this stuff, and um, they have a a pain mat system where you put it on your body wherever you have pain for several hours and then after that it's gone. It doesn't exist. They will have systems that will regenerate your body also. Here, when you say regenerate and, uh, your body, what, what do you mean? So like if you've got a severed limb, it'll grow the, the, a new limb back? What'll it do? Yeah, you can do that. He's He grew a guy's finger back already doing this technology. And also he has cured paralysis. And if you have an emotional or mental disease, certain types can be cured. It depends what the cause of it is. What, what uh, about what about re rejuvenation issues? Where you you know I'm a 60 year old guy. Could I roll back this the the odometer to uh, be maybe 20, 25? That'd be nice. You can go back to a state of optimum health. Here's how it works: Your body has plasma. Over the years, whenever you get sick, it needs it. It releases some of the plasma, and it eventually causes divisions, and you lose you lose it. And when it gets to a certain point, you die. What you can do is you can feed the body the plasma, so instead of having your body release it, it gets it from this technology, so it prolongs your life. I mean, not forever, but f put it this way: you should be able to live for thousands of years in space. Well, well, while while we're talking about that, I, I want to give a plug to uh, the, the the good folks over at uh, www.confidentialrx.biz. And being that we are living in uncertain times, I, I recommend again that everyone, if you need asthma medications, blood pressure medications, treatment for diabetes, uh, antibiotics, anything you need, go to their website, register, get on, uh, look at what they've got, figure out what you need to protect you and your family uh, in a crisis, and 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 get on online and uh you know don't be caught short on that one that's uh that, that, that's an important thing so everybody needs to do that in, until we can get this uh this other technology available globally now how would this new technology i mean it sounds like it's going to put all the industries out of business <laughs> so that, uh, I mean, that isn't that usually the problem when these brilliant people come up with these ideas because there were ideas in the 1800s that would have replaced coal and oil and that just got, those patents got purchased and swept up under the rug. Or, or those oh. creators were murdered, you know, those engineers. Well, a lot of big corporations behind the scenes are actually working on the technology. So, well, that's it's, good. That's there's going to be a changeover. It's going to be taking time. It might cause a little havoc in the changeover, but in the end, it'll, humanity will benefit from it, put it that way. Well, the the issue here is the same as when the internal combustion engine came out. You know, if you were in the uh, the business of making wagons, or you were in the business of making harnesses, or bridles, or buggy whips, uh, you sort of had to restructure your uh, your 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 business or, or go away. And so, uh, these corporations are going to have to restructure their business somehow, or else they're going to go away. They're going to go go away the buggy whip company. And so, uh, you know, I, I welcome it. I think it's actually going to create an economic boom. Uh, you know, is it going to, but it's going to shuffle the deck. So different players, uh, might, might, might be the wealthy guys next time around. No, we got to, they're going to replace greed. They're going to replace no. what? Greed. Yes. Greed? With, with, yeah. With new technology, if everyone can travel and everyone, you know, greed gets replaced. There's no, there's no, there's no way to exploit, you know? Well, that, that that that's the key here because I, I tell you, after being in Syria and Lebanon and seeing how 
these 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 poor refugees. I mean, you know, can you? They're out of their home. They, they've been bombed out of their houses. They got nothing. Whether they're Palestinians, what the Israelis did it, or they're Syrians that ISIS did it, they got nothing. You know, they they got the clothes on their back. And uh, you know, I, I just just hate the, the the concept of people who exploit these people to enrich themselves. And I I would welcome that uh, in this world that uh, you know we we that the ability to exploit is is taken off the table. Anyway, Brett, what else you got, brother? Well, I'm over here with uh, Dan Winter also, working with him on some other technology and collaboration. You want to talk about that, Mike? Sure, let's talk about it. Let's let's get it all out. <laughs> well, he's got a machine that they've been building for us, and I'm working on it with them. It uses a phase conjugate field using high frequency tubes surrounded by a low frequency tube it creates a vortex of the plasma it's a lit plasma which will regenerate the body and speed up healing so uh, i i would see applications for this i think we could sell this to every nfl team whenever a uh, a player gets injured tears a muscle you know blows an acl that they could uh, get this guy back on the men get him back on the field in days instead of months Absolutely, you know that that that's something. And then people recovering from surgery, if if they've had uh, some some procedure, uh, having a very rapid recovery from the surgical procedure, so that they're up and around in days, uh, and, and again instead of months. So, and, and you know, talking to Dan, one of the things that he said, he said that it's 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 possible to take a uh, an, an organ or an organism and restore it to a previously more organized state, but you can't take it and take it to a, a more disorganized state. I think that's a, a very fascinating concept. So if if we could take our, our human bodies back to the highly organized state we were in our prime, if you would, uh, and, and maintain that, that would certainly be uh, something impressive. Yeah. What he talks My- about is also the example of a rusted nail. You can put their device on a rusted nail and the rust will turn back into iron and the nail like it was before it rusted. But you can't take it back to a more disordered state. It only goes back to an ordered state. It's time reversal field. All right, go ahead, Alex. Do you have a question? Yeah, I was just thinking, like, okay, so all this new technology comes out. Everything's efficient. People live forever. How, I mean, I guess it's, I mean, what? I mean, the whole concept, though, I mean, how do you deal with population? How do you deal with... Uh, now, I guess if energy is free, all of the all of the land that is not livable right now can be. Uh, we can pump the water in there. Via well, the if you have a gravitational system, is there a need to live on the land? Can you take your car and house with you in the air, wherever you want to go in space? Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, do you. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I guess if that's for you, <laughs> I don't know about you, but <laughs> well, I'm going to the ocean. Well, Alex, one of the things that I've been looking forward to my whole life is is getting off of this planet and actually doing interstellar exploration, uh, you know, finding other star systems out there and see other places that might be habitable to, to human life. Yeah, that is, that's true. Yeah, that, that's a whole different dynamic I didn't even consider. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's pretty cool. I hope it happens yeah, soon. There won't be a population when everybody wants to leave the planet. There will be a lack of population. Yeah, that's true. And, and if power systems are, if everything's so efficient, like, for example, there are countries where people would love to live in, but just because you can't get water in there, with that with that form of energy, you can move water at, you know, create lakes and create, you know, agrarian uh, areas. It's cool. Well, well do, do you guys ever see the movie Blade Runner? Yeah, yeah, that that was it was a really great movie, and uh, the the demand for uh, capable human beings was so great that they had to create uh, essentially artificial human beings that looked human in every way, behaved human, superior to human. And the only people who were left on Earth are those who had uh, various defects, couldn't get off world, uh, you know, didn't didn't have the the right stuff to cut it uh, out in out in the big universe. I think uh, if if this takes off, if this is really true, I think that may be more of a scenario to where only the uh, uh, the, the 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 least capable will be left on this planet and then the robots will eat them and the robots will eat them yeah probably it's a <laughs> <laughs> 
All right, Brett. Anything else you got, Brett? That's about it. That's about all I can say. All righty. All right. So, what else are you doing in Italy, man? Private. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You doing anything fun? You you going out? Oh, yeah. You eat some good Italian food? What are you doing? Do you got a girlfriend there yet? What's the story? <laughs> on, give, give us the dish. Well, we went out. I, I'm at a resort. It's really nice. It's got a huge golf course and spas and all kinds of stuff to do. And uh, we went downtown several times out to eat. Walked around the lake in the uh, strip area they have here. It's a it's a nice place to visit. But it's cold here right now, so. So when when is prime season for them? That's probably summer or what? Here was a, yeah. Here in the summers when everybody comes here, it's usually the wealthy come here. They have summer homes here, mm-hmm. and uh, but tomorrow I'm going to be off to France. Like news. Uh, okay, yeah, you go to go to go to Dan's place in France. Uh, you know, and, and where you're going to, I, I love that area. I love the south of France. I'm I'm a big fan of uh, the Toulouse area, the Tarn Valley. Uh, I've been to Carcassonne, which if you get a chance to go see it, go see it. It's probably the finest example of a medieval castle that, uh, that you could ever imagine. It, it's a, it's really a, it's not even a castle. It's a walled city that that's uh, inside of a castle. It's, it's really, really something. It's, uh, quite, quite impressive. I'll have to do that. Um, we're, I'm going to several places, actually. Um, one of the places I'm going to with, uh, one of the fusion physicists from Europe, I'm going to his lab to begin working on this technology with okay. him. And then I'm going to be going up further with Dan and then back again, probably. You know, one of the things you have to do when you're there is, uh, you know, for five bucks U.S., you can get yourself a damn nice bottle of, uh, of, a, of a French red wine that would cost you probably, you know, 35 or 40 in this country. And, uh, boy, it's, you know, you're, you're going to have labels and brands and, uh, you know, uh, uh, vineyards and stuff that you're, you've never seen or heard of before but are just outstanding. And, Actually, and- the place I'm at is surrounded by wine vineyards. Well, there you go. You know, I'm sure you're drinking good Italian wine too. If you're not, you should. No, I haven't drank any wine yet. Uh oh, you're slipping. I mean, that's yeah, why you, that's slipping. that's why you need me there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why you need me there. I've been know? drinking lots of cappuccino and I had some champagne and some other. We went to this uh, restaurant. It's a uh, old stable. It's a restaurant on an off beaten road, and you don't, no one knows it's there. And I was taken there by one of Kesha's people, and. Uh, Okay. So what are we going to do when the AI wakes up and uh, decides it doesn't want to deal with us anymore? I have no idea. <laughs> yeah, just, just an interesting, interesting question I have. I guess we'll have to use some cache technology on the yeah. <laughs> don't know. Don't know. So what are the limitations to this cache, cache technology? What can it do? What can't it do? Well, in a basic way, so people can understand you're playing with the essence of the fields of creation. So you can replicate any field or energy or any process that's created in the universe. But that's a long way to go from what we know now or what's been shared now. Okay. So go on. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's, a, that's a partial answer. Give us the rest. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can do a lot of bad things with it too. That's one of the problems that we have make sure the bad people don't get it. Um, it. You can literally take an atom and release all the energies and literally blow a planet up. Or you can kill everyone in literally a couple of minutes on the planet. Or well, you can destroy all the satellites instantaneously. Well, we don't want to do any of those things. What we want to do exactly. is, uh, is, is, uh, is help with these things, not, you know, harm anybody. There's uh so, Yes, and I, I, I signed an agreement and made an agreement to uh, not use it to harm anybody or any entity. I just got a, a, an email from uh, one of the other attendees who was at the conference that you and I were at up in Washington. And she says she stayed three days after we left on Sunday. There were only a few of us left. Most people were at the bonfire pit. James came out to the field where I was standing and told me he got info and to watch. We saw two ships come in low and a second one powered up extremely bright. So uh, I just, just read that on the air for her. So, uh, you know, her and I have stayed in touch since then. I made some great contacts up there, really good people. Yeah, most so, people don't know that I stayed days after Mike left to do what I had to do. So uh, how long were you there afterwards? Things. How long were you there afterwards? I was there until Thursday. And uh, uh, well, it was important. And I came back and had some introductions on 
Okay. So and some questions answered. Okay. So you um, all right. I'm, I'm not going to ask this on the air. I'm just, I'll ask you privately. Just, uh, just, just needing to to outline what our what our next steps need to be in order to to get these technologies out and among the world. Because, you know, everybody out here knows this. I mean, I can't say everybody knows it, but many people out there know that about the UFO thing. We know it's real. There, 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 there's too many YouTube videos. There's too many, you know, people with cell phones capturing images. We, we, we know that it exists. We know that these technologies are possible. We know our government's been suppressing this. We know they've had an active program uh, to, to suppress all this information. And it, it, it's time to, to break this open. It's time to get this out so that, uh, so that mankind can, can make their, their, their next steps, you know, the next baby steps out into the universe. And to, to have us held up because uh, of, of one-tenth of one percent of the global population that, that wants to control the rest of us, that's just, uh, it's, it's just stupid. And, uh, you know, we need to force this issue. Yeah, the, the people that are doing this, I mean, they're hooking power. Because if they understood that if they release the technology, they can still have everything they have. And they'll have more. They just won't have power and control over us. But materialistically, they'll still have everything they have and more. Well, well, that's just it. You know, I mean, you you look at how life was before the internal combustion engine. You know, I mean, you you may have had more than somebody else, but everybody got a boost. Everybody got a, a, a did. Everyone is doing better because of internal combustion engines. Now, you, you we go to the next level of of, of energy production. That, that allows us to, uh, to, to produce energy in massive quantities. Everyone's going to do better then, too. Some people are going to do better than others because they've got more ability, more capability. But everybody is doing better. I mean, if, if you go back, uh, you know, uh, 100 years before the internal combustion engine, most people were living as peasants around the world. Whether you were uh, you know, a slave or whether you were free, you were, you're probably a dirt farmer out there scratching the dirt with a horse and a plow. And, and you could produce maybe enough to feed you and your family, maybe not. Since the internal combustion engine, everybody is, you know, food is plentiful most every place as you, you go. And if, if, we, if we improve upon that energy production, I, I, it's, it just uh, extrapolates out that things are going to get that much better for everyone who's alive. Um, let me uh, tell everybody else about something about the cash technology. Um, you can use it for agricultural purposes. This has already been done by a team in China. They've been growing this stuff. They've been using a special material and um, feeding it to the plants. And uh, even when it's frozen outside in ice, the plants that have been fed the material, they don't freeze. They stay alive and they're healthy completely. So you can grow food in frigid or, or very, very hot environments and it will be completely normal. So really what, what, what this technology does then is it, ex, it expands the, um, the temperate zone which plants can thrive. Yep. And on top of it, it, to, it can... may, may, makes it so they can live in a hotter environment, makes it so they can live in a colder environment, but it, it, it spreads out. Uh, yeah. So what would that do to growing season and agricultural production? I think it's probably driving through the roof. Not only that, but all the Monsanto GM seeds, this changes the DNA back to normal. Ah, that's something I want to hear because you know what? I don't think Monsanto is doing us any favors. I think uh, by putting pesticides in the food supply that, that the plants create, I think they're going to kill us all just as quick as they can. Anyway, Brett, Alex, thank you both very much for joining me on this day when I'm a bit uh, lethargic from uh, travel fatigue. But thank you both for, for, for saving my bacon because you did. And, folks, that's it. I'll be back tomorrow, and I'll be on Kerry Cassidy's show in an hour. So uh, talk to you all then. Bye-bye.